Okay, thanks very much for your time, gentlemen. It's uh, 2.02. Let's launch into this, and uh, hopefully uh, whoever waiting for a name is uh, will welcome them. This was presented by uh, myself, Philip Ling, and Jose uh, Meyer from Peter Basso Associates. Philip uh, is a co-owner of a company in, um, uh, in Canada, uh, Toronto. They are North Canada's leading name in uh, transformers uh, construction, custom transformer construction. So he, was a val he had a valuable insight into this. So um, this uh, is the copy of the paper itself. Um, as you can see, we'll be getting into some of this. Uh, we'll be cutting over to uh, Philip and um, Philip and Jose's explanation of what this is all about. But that's what the, the paper looked like. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be in the uh, magazine uh, transactions. It may well be in the magazine. We have to make some changes. Hopefully, I have time for it. Uh, here, I'm trying to make a point that this is the crux of the issue here. This is the table which is causing us to design for. Um, designed for uh, loads we frankly never really see and they never saw that even back then there were certain assumptions about the economy's growth that uh, were embedded in this and they really have not changed that much okay um, so this is the actual language that got changed this is the new language here and what's uh, what we ought to understand here is that the exception does not require an energy uh, management system many of the consultants are claiming that we need an energy management system. We actually need a mo power monitoring system. It's not quite the same thing, uh, and it can be done very simply, as you'll see uh, in, in Jose's discussion. Um, this is uh, a, a paper that preceded. Um, uh, this is a paper that preceded this. This was published last year, um, and uh, this is by Tom Harmon from the University of Houston. Uh, obviously, you know Jim Harvey, my colleague. Um, on a triple E. Uh, this was also published last year uh, with Joe Andre at the, uh, he's the uh, NEMA's representative of the International Energy Conservation Code. Um, and uh, we were trying to tell this story. Uh, I always like to let other people uh, hear it from other people, but he actually did a little calculation here. And um, he prepared this sidebar that just explained that um, if you really uh, apply this rule, uh, this exception, you're, you're talking about a very disruptive uh, cost avoidance, and the industry is just taking a while to get used to it. So we did find the uh, Port uh, Authority of Long Island, uh, excuse me, Long Island, Port Authority of Long Island is using it already. Um, this was just published this month. Um, we tried to, uh, in, in Nemas Magazine again, I do a, an annual or, uh, article for the electrician safety. It's supposed to help uh, in uh, negotiations with the IBEW. I don't know whether that's been successful at this point. So um, we're, uh, we, we, we make the argument here that um, continued flash hazard reduction will occur when we continue to try to drive some of those uh, design density requirements. So I think uh, this takes us to, uh, oh, this is the article. Um, some backup information. I'm going to whisk right through this. We're seeing that um, our uh, empirical evidence is backed up by other measurements. Uh, this is a uh, computer displays. You, you probably all know this. I don't have to sing the praises of uh, VSDs. Uh, we continue to see uh, various uh, in industry sectors uh, reduce their power density, uh, but the NEC has not. Uh, without the exception, it would have not done that. So again, more of the same, um, more of the same. There is a correlation between gross domestic product growth and electrical demand. Um, and again, this is uh, more, what is this? Okay, LED, as it begins to penetrate, or as it continues uh, accelerating its penetration. We're aware, however, that um, as, uh, as, uh, we, as we persist in trying to reduce our energy uh, costs and, and lower power density, desi design density, that uh, there may be an effect that's called the Javon's effect, which says that uh, you'll end up uh, using more energy. It's almost uh, uh, orthodoxy, but uh, we're, we're aware of that. We'll, we'll have to be watching that. So in any case, uh, I stop right there, and I then I, I'm going to turn this over to Philip Ling, and let's let him tell his story. We'll get this fixed.
Okay, uh, welcome, uh, Pamela. Um, are you able to hear me? Um, Pamela? Well, um, this is being recording. A record. Hello, Ted, Pam? Yeah. Oh, hi. This is Pam. Hi, Pam. How are you today? Yeah, I came back. Good. How are you? Well, um, great. We have Ted White, and we were having some technical problems. Um, Pam, what uh, university are you from? I'm with Central Piedmont Community College in Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. Uh, from Central... I'm just trying to make sure this, this goes on. Uh, it's, a, it's an easy way for me to figure out who's at the uh, at the conference. From Central Piedmont Community uh, College. Okay, in uh, Carolina. Okay. Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay, well, welcome. Um, we have uh, Ted um, Widener from Purdue, and we have uh, in in Indiana. We have Ryan Yorio from uh, Oakland University. Um, Pam, we try to uh, really promise a 30-minute uh, update here, so if you don't mind, uh, you'll notice that we're recording. You'll have access to the entire 30 minutes. Uh, we're going to go through and try to finish this before 2.30. Is that okay with you? Oh, yes. Yeah, I know I'm getting on late. Yeah, okay, no problem. All right, so let me get myself reoriented here. Um, and I'm going my, to mute myself, okay? Okay, fair enough. Uh, now I have to get myself off of, uh, uh, okay, so we're, okay, so that was Philip's um, part of the presentation, and I think we're still recording here. Uh, the transitions are admittedly very rough. Um, one thing I wanted to let you know is that um, we uh, have presented this possibility here internally to the, um, our sustainability people. Uh, they're their jaws drop when they see this. They don't quite know what to do. I thought this was particularly dramatic. Uh, in the U of M football stadium, for example, we have something close to 30 electrical closets, 30 electrical closets. And so when you consider that uh, uh, we have transformers that are even larger uh, than the uh, 75 kVAs. We have many 300s. So the amount of uh, wasted energy is staggering, uh, far beyond anything that we're all the time and resources we're spending on all these sustainability initiatives are completely outstripped by what we're doing here. But it's hard for that uh, realization to penetrate the industry. So and anyway, at this point I asked some questions. And now uh, my colleague uh, uh, Jose Meyer uh, came in and he gave about a six minute presentation. So he'll tell everyone what it means to, uh, what it means in terms of electrical design. So let me cut over to his. And we'll let it roll.
All right. So uh, let's see. We have another person coming online here. Uh, we're getting close to the end here. So let me get us to the. Um, uh, let's get. Let's finish out the rest of it. So we're going to go through Jose's part here. Um, remember, you're seeing a, a YouTube of a YouTube. You'll soon see a YouTube of a YouTube. So uh, at this point, are there any questions, Ryan, Pam, Ted? Okay. Um, so knowing that we were able to gather this data from uh, utility meters, we now know that we, we need to go uh, a little bit deeper into the power system. And so this research foundation project um, will, uh, is intended to try to, to get that data that would drive concepts that would allow designers the option to continue uh, to, to, to drive the design density down. Let's look at Ed Hangish on it. So um, I will be, uh, one, of, one of the areas that we're we'll generally at is this area here. This is the, uh, um, uh, the part of the code that forces designers to make certain assumptions uh, about, um, about the um, outlet load. And we'll be tarting these. We think we can get it down uh, to 120 with some ease, uh, but uh, they're going to need the data for that. So uh, I'll be meeting with uh, the uh, Research Foundation next uh, next weekend uh, at the annual meeting in Las Vegas, and I will be meeting with the, uh, with the American Medical Association and IEEE as well as NFPA to get some of this stuff done. Let's see, we might have another person in line here. Um, okay, there's Ed. All right, um, welcome, Ed. Uh, any, we're about ready to wrap this up. This will be available on YouTube. Um, do you mind that we're recording this right now, Ed? Hmm. Maybe you can't hear us. Okay. Um, so this is the, the formal uh, research projects laid out by you. So uh, just some final uh, statements here about uh, what, why this has been so difficult. Um, and it's been that um, uh, insurance companies are very concerned uh, about uh, fire risk. Um, consultant design compensation is often based on construction costs. Uh, utility tariffs actually uh, are designed to promote a larger size. Um, also state and enforcement authorities base their inspection fees on a higher load. There's also this assumption about future expansion which we never saw. Um, labor unions benefit from uh, higher wage electricians. Uh, if you have to move more medium voltage around then there's higher training and uh, there's, it's not as great as some of these other costs, but it's still part of it. And of course, transformer and switchgear manufacturers don't, or are not really, uh, this wouldn't be their first choice. Regardless, um, Eaton and Schneider Electric has, uh, have been, they have put themselves in a position to try to promote this. They can see the, uh, they can see where the, uh, where the advantages are. Uh, we know that we're going to be running equipment hotter. Uh, that may affect equipment life cycles. Uh, my answer to those core organizations are to innovate. We can make our, uh, innovate our materials, the way they're constructed to get these transformers to operate closer to their optimal efficiency. Um, this is just a, um, uh, this is just an article that we're, tr we're uh, I, I mentioned this because we're going to be founding a new IEEE society uh, that deals with campus uh, distribution systems and uh, this article appeared in the uh, uh, the SCUP journal, uh, what we're conceiving what, what a power system, a, a system within a system, what that starts to look like. And we, we've made some good progress in actually building some new systems. And um, you'll, we'll see the effect of this lower power density. Finally, I want to uh, thank people. Um, I you could not have done this alone. It took nine years to get this done. Mark Early is uh, the project leader for the NEC. Jim Pauley uh, is the uh, president of the ANSI and also of NFPA. My colleague Jim at um, U of M, Tom Harmon at, uh, at Houston, Jim Sanguinetti at Las Vegas, Paul Kemp at Notre Dame, Joe Hortel, uh, Chief Electrical Inspector of Wisconsin, Joe Andre, uh, the, um, NEMA, the NEMA representative of the International Energy Conservation Code, Philip, Jose, Robert Ianello at, at, uh, at Eaton, who has uh, put out the first bit of money for the research project, and Casey Grant, the uh, the uh, committee chairman for the uh, Research Foundation. So, and of course I have to thank my boss who saw the, the reason for all of this, which is now paying off in spades. So, that is the end of the show, folks, and we're at 229. 
um, I'll be launching this. Um, uh, I'll be trans. I'll, I'll transcribe this um, uh, on YouTube, and I'll make it available on our website. Our website is where is our website? Um, right here. And um, so you'll see this show up as the meeting minutes, and I'll post it down here. And uh, what's the other thing I wanted to show you? Oh, you know that we'll be developing this new organization as part of IEEE. Uh, it's non-trivial. You have to realize that uh, after 150 odd years, there's not many uh, societies in IEEE. So we're proposing one that would be deal with either public sector infrastructure, uh, or uh, we'll call it uh, uh, educational campuses, uh, educational and healthcare campus, or campus distribution systems. There'll be some uh, dickering over what the name is going to be like, and but nobody disagrees, at least in the meetings we had in Texas but this is absolutely necessary because the user owner interest is virtually absent and there doesn't seem to be any trade association that can capture that person. So um, I think that's all I really want to do um, at the moment. Uh, any final questions? I, I, at, at this point, the, 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 the meeting itself has, uh, has formally closed. I'm welcome to any, uh, ask, answer any, any other questions. I'll actually stop recording.